All right, this was a video I just did of proof pyramids built down in old map. These are the, the plateaus. This is the Giza Plateau. Cairo is right here. This is an old map. It's called Babylon, Egypt, and it, it was drawn in 1500 somewhere. And it was on, in an, um, for sale on one of these um, antiquity sites. And someone sent this to me, it was Peter Thorstenson. And um, I was blown away, because here's the pyramids right on the tendons, exactly what I said. And those are tendons, they're not feet. So let's go, I'm going to show you where you can go to see the evidence of what feet are. And now I'm going to show you what plants are and the reason they will never do this. Okay, I've been saying that the gold flows down the art arteries into the deepest part of the body, wherever that may be. If the giant was standing up, the gold would go straight down to the heel. It's called the calcaneus arterial branches. They're in the back of the heel. It comes down and then it scoops around. Now, this is what they found in this, this um, mine in Australia. And where they dug, I guess it was right in a no toe in the calcaneus tendon. I'm telling you, I could see it. And what happened was they were going to get rid of this mine because of the gold played out and all the metals played out. Well, they didn't play out and run out. They ran down to the actual lowest level. So they kept digging and digging and digging through the quartz, this white quartz, until they hit gold at the bottom. 1,600 feet down. Now, the reason you get the white quartz in there is that's the quartz silicates that fill in when the blood goes into solution and out of the body. But the gold is very heavy, it drops to the bottom. So listen to what he has to say. It's enough to make King Midas jealous. These gold encrusted rocks came from the Beta Hunt Mine near Cambauda in the WA Goldfields. About 500 meters below the surface, in an area three meters wide and three meters high, Miners stumbled on one of the richest patches of gold ever seen in Australia. How about that one? You might go your whole life and you'll never never see anything like it. As a geologist, as I said, you get excited by a pinhead. But to see something on this scale is, is phenomenal. More than 9,000 ounces of gold, worth about $15 million, was brought to the surface in just four days. Miners have described it as hitting the mother load. As I watered the dirt down, yeah, there was just gold everywhere, as far as you could see. Security at the mine has been tight, Armed guards have been transporting the gold to a secure vault. Workers are under constant video surveillance and the area of the mine where the gold was found has been fenced off and padlocked. These are the two biggest specimens they've found so far. This one's 90 kilograms and this one's 60 kilograms. In here is about 2,300 ounces of gold. And at today's gold price, it's about $3.8 million worth of gold. The mine's Canadian owners, RNC Minerals, are planning to auction the large specimens. The Beta Hunt mine has been on the market for several months. The Toronto-based company is in the final stages of the sale process. When we started the sale process, it wasn't because um, we don't like the asset. We always believed that it had the potential to become a multi-hundred thousand ounce mining operation. We just weren't able to raise the capital required to do the exploration zone. The question now is whether there's more gold waiting to be found. Jared Lucas, there is more gold waiting to be found, I can guarantee you that. Down under, a little further up, all they got to do is swing north on that foot. And they will find more gold. All they have to do is follow the quartz, because the quartz is filled in where the blood has run out, and the gold is collected there. So, these are feet. Now, let me show you what happens in in um, regular plant material, because it doesn't do this, it doesn't do the same thing as feet. There is no fibrils. They, they explode, the cellularness, the turgidity creators, the cell membranes, well not the cell membranes, the cell walls, explode, crack, and break apart. And they break apart just like somebody cut them with a chewing saw. So let's look at it. Okay, this is tendon, and they turn into these hex fibrils, and every single fibril in here is separated from every other fibril, and they are calcium carbonate. In your body, CaCO3, and they are calcium carbonate, and stay separated after death, and still are CaCO3, 
However, they have the slippery kaolin clay, synovial sheaths, you know, leucine-rich proteins. They have some other little bits and pieces of minerals in them that are not present in marine limestone. This is porphyritic terrestrial limestone. This is tendinous straps that come down and when it breaks or when it's cut, there cut is what's called a wrinkle zone. And then you continue on with the, uh, the fibers and they don't have the wrinkle. And then they attach, see this bulb here? This bulb over here, they go into the ground and the calcaneus heel is in the ground. Okay, this is what's called an abrupt transition, just like it showed where the tendon fails in the body. This is the wrinkle zone, just like it showed where the tendon wrinkles at the top. These are the fibers, just like it showed in the anatomical drawing. This is the bulb that goes around the heel, just I mean the uh, ankle, just like it showed in the drawing. This is the re rear where the calcaneal tendon, well, the, the, the cal calcaneal, you know, the, the heel is in here. So this is the heel area. The rest would go out this way. You can actually see some of the little red spots right here where that is blood, actually where the, the blood was there. All right. So that is why I say that is the giant foot of a giant creature. And you say, why is there only one right in that area? Well, there's, there's another one somewhere around there. But they usually have one uh, higher up in the mud than the other one, which is trying to push them out of the mud, and they eventually just died with one higher than the other. That's what I've seen. I've seen them rarely, rarely, both of them at the top. I mean, why would the guy have both of them at the top? He would fall over. Um, when they're stuck in the mud like this, they're there for... for until the, the water receded. And in the meantime, all around here has eroded the fleshy stuff, which is weak. And I found it all over. You go look on there, you'll, you'll find it all over near the river area. And this is Devil's Post Pile, and that's another abrupt transition in this area. That's the wrinkle zone. It's got cut here somehow. You know, this is sort of twisted around but that's what happens in your uh, tendons they they do a lot of different jobs your arms your legs your toes your fingers everything has tendons in it that's how everything moves and that is how they move there and these structures and these little wavy things are what happens when tendons get cut and they lose their tension they go bing they snap back and they give a wrinkles on so that's the truth of the whole story Okay, petrified wood is like this right here. You see that you find they find them like this. This looks like ch -ch 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 -ch. well, no, they, these are chunks that are actually made to be able to make that tree move around this way with cellular tur turgidity. It's called one side will get stiff and the other side will get flaccid and it will twist or vice versa. Looking for the sun and they, you know they find them like this all over the place. They're not. It's not unusual, it's just they're everywhere like that. Um, now, I don't know what else to say other than, well, I can show you the biology. Oh, wow, look at this. This is mine on here. Yeah, this is from Mud Fossil University. I'm on uh, Google search, okay. All right, I did this. All right, this would be a giant tendons, not trees. Chemistry proves it. <laughs> All right, so do a Google search. How's that for you? Now, uh, it's just the way it is. See, these are what you're going to see. And I know this quite well. Now, see, that, that's a hair. That's not a tree, that is a hair. You see that at the bottom? You see this little flaky stuff there? That's a hair. And this red blood, and that's a skin tissue. Not a tree. Trees. See? Trees. Now, that could be a tree stump. And I believe it is. And occasionally you will see these, but not the type 
that you will, you will see of the tendon fibrils. They don't have that same structure at all. Uh, you see, this is this is, the, this is the nature of trees. Now let's look at what it, they're, they're how they're constructed in biology.